Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the brush tool. We're going to go over all the options. We'll go over surface, preview, we'll go over all the fall off types, we'll go over the modes such as smear, pull, surface, normal, repel, spin, twister, vortex, and we'll also go over a few of the vertex map options such as paint, blur, bleed, and we'll be able to add in some deformers to affect that as well. We'll also go over the strength, the radius, and the width. You can use the brush tool in point mode, edge mode, or polygon mode. And you can access it by going to right click and then brush. You can also access the brush tool by going to MC on your keyboard. And you can also go to the um, model layout and you have the brush tool icon right down here. So I'm going to go back to our attributes manager. And the first option that we have is surface. So if I zoom in a little bit and I dial my brush to around 20 and I don't have the checkbox for surface on and I use the tool and I'm going to rotate around you can see that it affects the other side of our model as well. So it doesn't just affect what I can visibly see, but also affects behind it as well. Now, let me undo. And if I check surface, that will protect whatever is behind the rest of your model. So I can move, in this case, polygons. You're not gonna have anything affected behind your model. So now I'm going to undo back. And we also have preview. If we check this, you can see that we don't have our circle that we can visibly see in our viewport. And I check it on and you can see now that's now visible. Okay, so the next options that we have is the fall off. The uh, ability of the effect that we have that falls off from our cursor and our circle. So the, by default, it's the bell, which is a, a normal bell curve. And we also have constant, which by its name constantly moves whatever is within this circle. You can see as I move things around. Let me undo back. And we have linear. And some of these are pretty similar in terms of their fall off. Dome, which as you imagine has a, a very dome, uh, dome curve. A bell, which is our default circle which is whatever is in that circle in a polygon mode. And we have needle, which is a, a very specific fall off. It's just at that point. And you can see how it affects as uh, at the angle that I am at. And we have spline. Uh, let me undo back and we have a spline here and then just as any other spline within Cinema 4D you can add in points by clicking command and then click on the spline and that will add in uh, nodes to your to your spline now if I bring up the radius a little bit, I'll go to 100. And let me zoom out and get a top view. You can see as I click and drag the shape of the spline as it goes across the surface of our model. 
Okay, so let me undo back and let me go to our bell. Next we have is mode and smear. Let me drop the radius to 20. The next we have is, is smear, which smears the polygons across the surface of our model in the direction of where we're pulling our, our cursor. Let me undo back. Next we have is pull, and this pulls the polygons or points or edges, depending on what mode we're in, towards the camera. And let me rotate around. The next mode we have is surface. And that is affected as we move our cursor across the surface of our model. You can see how that affects our polygons. Next is normal. And that uh, affects the polygons from the point of their normals. And this also has a check mark for update normals as well as, uh, excuse me, and the next one that we have is Repel. And let me get a, a more of a top view. And you can see how it repels the polygons or points or edges away from the point of your cursor, from the center of your circle. And let me undo. Spin will rotate your, your polygons. And uh, as with all, the, all of our modes, we can also use our control button. And that will uh, spin in the opposite direction. And this works on all of our modes, depending on if you're on smear, if you hold on control, it'll smear in the other direction. Pull will push in from the point of our camera. So pull push away from our camera. So we covered spin. Twister is similar, but it twists the polygons and twists on itself towards the point of our in the middle point of our cursor of our circle. So let me try that again. And see if I keep on going, it'll just keep rotating around and twisting in on itself. Now we have vortex was similar to twister, except that it's going to go towards our camera. So it's going to be twisting and turning. And if I rotate around, you can see it goes towards the camera. And we have smooth, which if I go back to our, say, twister, and I affect these polygons, and I go back to smooth, this will smooth that out. This is actually one of my favorite modes when I'm doing any type of modeling. Sometimes my model mesh might start looking a little sloppy and then I'll use that to, um, to affect those, those points. Uh, a lot of times I'll have like say a bunch of points that I want to smooth out so I'll just select those points and then go back to my brush tool and then I'll just smooth out those points. And it won't affect the other ones around it. So if I go back to smooth, I can just affect 
and just smooth out those points. It's very useful. So next, uh, let me go back to polygon mode. Next, I went through paint, uh, I went through smooth. Next, we're going to go through paint, and the rest of these will be for uh, vertex maps. So you can see as I click and paint uh, a certain area, it's going to have uh, a color that will affect, this will be affected by the vertex map and the red will not. You can see a little bit of the fall off. And you can see that we have a vertex tag applied to our, to our model, to our mesh. Let me go back to our attribute. And we have a few others, blur, which will blur out, similar if you use something like Photoshop, and it'll just kind of blur out that, that fall off. And we have bleed. which does pretty much the opposite, and that will bleed out into uh, the intensity of the fallout off into the rest of the uh, model. And then we have the intensity, which increases that, that fall off. You can see that right there. Now that we have this uh, texture map, uh, excuse me, this vertex map applied to our cube, we can then use something, say, a deformer. So if I go to, say, a, um, uh, a any any deformer, really, we can go to blend, uh, bend, apply this underneath our cube, and then we'll go to fit to parent, and we increase our strength, you can see it affects our entire model. What we would have to do is we would have to select our bend, go to uh, Cinema 4D Tags, and we'll go to Restriction. Now we have a field where we can pull our vertex map into. Apply that there. Now if we use our bend, you can see it only affects the points that we painted in. And we can go back to our map and we can go to our brush tool again, MC, and uh, make sure that you are uh, selecting the cube. And then we can then use any of our tools to affect this, this vertex, these points, or these polygons in the, for this example. So we can kind of blur this out. And we can apply different deformers, um, say the formula. I'm going to bring this restriction tag back into the formula, take out the bend, put formula in there. Let me go to more st st uh, startup layout. We can apply that, and that just affects our, just the, what we painted in for our vertex map. If I hit play. Now, if I hit stop, and I go back to our, our cube, I'm gonna turn off our uh, formula and bend. Let me go to our attributes and we still have strength, which um, I'm going to pull these out for a second and zoom in a bit. Now, if I go to, say, uh, one of our other modes, such as pull, we have our strength that we can also use. We can dial this down to say 20 and that will lower the effect that we have on our 
polygons. And we also have the radius that I didn't really uh, go into before, but we can also affect that uh, that draw that uh, circle size. And we can decrease that on our keyboard using the left bracket. And you can see that we'll slowly bring that down or the right bracket in order to increase that. Now we also have our width. Let me bring this down to something a little bit more manageable, 20. And we have our width and that just affects the width within our, our circle. You can see that if I bring this down, has a has an effect. It's not. It's pretty subtle, but we do have that option as well. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I've made so far. Thanks for watching.